All right, we are very honored, very lucky to bring up Zach Green, producer extraordinaire, Fatal Pictures, his latest entry into it, Air, just played at Fantasia. Zach, how you doing? Good, buddy. Good. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, Jay. Oh, no problem. Excited to be here. I'm excited to have you on, and I hope everything went well with Robert's show. I did very much so, and the the conversation was great uh, with great. Robert. And it's interesting because Robert's done so many different projects, and it it seems in the last few years, especially, you can't see a project up in Toronto without seeing Robert involved somehow <laughs> with it. He he's so yeah. versatile, and he's such a, a kind guy, and he's a talented guy, and that's really you, you know that's really something when it came to the short film air that you had to look at when you sat down with the 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 crew and you were setting things up the locations and you were getting uh the finances in order and casting robert uh nolan and bill oberst jr are two very polarizing figures robert and bill for different reasons but they when you cast them both what was your thoughts initially when they came in and wanted to be a part of this oh wow that's a great question uh lots to talk about there so working with Robert uh, in the in my previous two films, Worm from 2010 and Familiar from 2012, yeah, I really I understood what what he can bring to the characters and and how we can use him and manipulate him and what we can ex- exploit from him. Yeah, and he's such a great talent. He really is so skilled, and he was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal in Worm. He got uh, there were awards uh, for best actor in a short film that he won. Uh, there were there were great reviews talking just solely of his performance. It, it just just brilliant. And when Familiar came around, he really wanted to read for it. So we you know of course we're gonna let him read for it. He really blew us away with that one. Yeah. So I knew I knew he would bring uh, something amazing to Air and what we needed. But he's on the opposite side of the coin in Air. If yeah. You know what I mean. He doesn't necessarily play the main villain. Oh, well, I, I, you know what? I don't even want to talk on that. <laughs> I really Fair don't enough. want to tell you who's the protagonist. I don't want to get into any of that. Um, uh, so yeah, it mainly is about Robert and Bill. It's it's both of them driving this film. Bill, on the other hand, is just uh, from what I've seen over the years and just seeing some of his movies and talking to some of the producers and directors of films he's been in I've heard only amazing amazing brilliant things about him wow I've, I've seen brilliant performances so when I reached out to him I was very excited he opened uh, open you know opened his arms or just opened his arms and was willing to hear what I had to say and I was very very grateful so he he read the script he was more than happy to read the script and I, all I, I just sent him the script. I said, Bill, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Yeah. That's all I said. And he got back to me and he said he really, really thought it was brilliant. He actually said he had a nightmare that night about it, thinking about wow. it. Wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was just um, such satisfaction hearing that. And the, the story really is very intense and intelligent. Um, it's a metaphor for child abuse. Exactly. And. It's like, yeah, the right away you can think that that it is a heavy topic by all means, don't get me wrong, but we, we don't delve into it and, and like you might think we do. Just by reading some of the acclaimed uh, reviews out there, you if you read those first, you would understand that it, uh, it, it really is a very artful, gorgeous cinematic piece of cinema. Yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more. And it's interesting because this sort of film, and it's it's written and directed by Richard Powell. And Richard's been someone who has built a reputation and a body of work, someone who is very respected in the aspect of, of cinema, especially up north. You look at this, and this could be a film, Zach, that you take on, a short film that you take on, that some people might push away from, might stray away from because of that subject matter, uh, because of uh, child abuse and stuff like that. But you guys embraced it as part of this trilogy. Well, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I've already uh, gotten turned down, and places have already you know, kind of um, kept the door closed to, to this picture because of it is, it is very controversial, very uh, because the it's it's really taboo in North America. Yeah. Um, funny enough, in, in Europe and um, in the UK, um, I'm getting a lot of more positive responses. Um, Interesting. But uh, it's like don't get Mitch at Fant- uh, Fantasia was he he loved the film. He was blown away by it, and just hearing that alone really told me and Richard, okay, you know, people are gonna understand this. Ain't it cool? Uh, Icons of fright. There's some great great reviews out there. 
of uh, critics who really understood this picture and what we were trying to do. Yeah. And it was all about growth. This film was all about growing and learning and uh, working with actors like uh, Bill O'Burst Jr. We also worked with a co-production company right here in Toronto that we met on the film festival circuit uh, back in 2010 when we were touring uh, Worm. Yeah. Uh, great, great company right in Toronto here called Red Sneakers Media. It's uh, Mark Roussel and Ron, Ron Bosch. Uh, great, great filmmakers themselves. We kept in touch with these guys over the years, and they're actually co-producing this film with us, and we couldn't be more happy about it. That's that's amazing. It's amazing because also, you know, it's very as you talked about, very visually stunning, um, and you have to put so much together in 13 minutes and change. One of the big things about it, though, and that's the practical effects that go into it. Um, when you look at it, you have the butcher shop that is a part of this production, and and how it was indicated that they were child abusers in this film. Okay, well, of course, Fatal Pictures, we are all about practical effects. We try to stay away from CG as much as possible, mainly because we really feel like the horror fans can tell. Um, yeah. I know I've seen, uh, in the last couple of years, I've seen some some CG films that, like horror, with the, their blood is CG and stuff like that. You really can see the digital I mean, if it's done very well, you can hide it. You can mask it very you, – you can. But for the most part – and because uh, – well, I shouldn't even say that. Because the, the, we, just, we just like to uh, go practical effects. It's more fun. Yeah. We've got great, great people to help us with that, such as the butcher shop. But I also want to, don't want to take anything away from the amazing cinematography, like you were saying, where it's very sexy. This is such a gorgeous film. The lighting, yeah. the cinematography. From Michael Yari Davidson, this is our second time working with him. He was the one who shot Air. Excuse me, Familiar. Okay. And he shot Air. Yeah. And um, we just couldn't say good enough things about him. We speak very highly of him, and he's just a phenomenal cinematographer, a great person to work with. But yeah, the effects, again... We like to stay practical and keep it real. Basically, what I can say without giving, you know, without really spoiling anything and giving anything away. Yeah. And uh, I don't think any of the reviews really have, which is great. Richard likes to say it like this. Child abusers are monsters. Yeah. Right? What if they really were monsters? Exactly right. Exactly right. So, and I don't really want to go too, too much more into... No worries. I don't want to ruin anything. I really exactly. don't. <laughs> um, it's really hard to speak of these movies without ruining them. They're really intelligent. Honestly, the scripts are very, very smart and intelligent. Again, there, there's a lot of underlining meaning uh, watching this movie. And when the, the comments, uh, I Mitch, Mitch uh, from uh, Mitch Davis at Fantasia Film yeah. Festival, he, he quoted, he said some really, really powerful, nice things about the film. And by by the th by the words he said, he you could tell he really understood the movie for what it was. So I just it was just such an honor to world premiere the film in our in our country at uh, Fantasia. It was just an honor. How was the uh, aspect of the crowd for the screening? It, what what was the reaction to it? And played, yeah, we played in a short film, uh, small gauge uh, short film block with a bunch of other shorts. Um, all all of the shorts got uh, great reactions. It was wonderful to meet some of the other filmmakers there, uh, have drinks with them, shoot the shit with them, and you never know where that's gonna gonna lead. But I'm I'm actually I was actually uh, reached tonight, funny enough, by one of the other filmmakers in our short film block to screen at another festival that I believe he's putting on. So I mean, there you go, just right there, we got another little screening. There would be obviously <laughs> more more details in the future. Air has been accepted uh, into three more film festivals. I'll be releasing where and when in the next uh, coming weeks and um, yeah we're, uh, the film's been submitted to many many festivals about 30 so wow. we're going to be hearing back uh, over the next uh, over the next few weeks we'll be hearing back and I'll be definitely promoting letting everybody know on Facebook Twitter Instagram all that social media stuff Hey, how was the Kickstarter with it? Uh, you, the portion of it yes. was fan funded for the budget talk a little bit about the yeah. Kickstarter and the support the big bulk the the, the the most of the budget was uh, kickstarted. Um, that was one of the. But speaking about growth, that was one of the things we really wanted to do was kickstart, have a successful Kickstarter campaign. We really did need to uh, resort to Kickstarter to try and make this movie. But again, that that was a uh, really, really. Uh, it was a great experience. It was grueling. It was tough. It's a, it's a full time job, honestly, to to promote that and get that everywhere. You really got to pound the pavement and. Get your Kickstarter out everywhere you can. Try to get it in newspaper, everywhere. Honestly, 
take print out flyers and go around in the subways and put them up. Like wow, uh, you have to do so many things. It's word of mouth, family, friends. Uh, it was difficult. There were some days where um, me and Richard were in just terrible moods. <laughs> just it's, uh, it's you know it's very gratifying when um, when you see your fans and, and people really believe in you and put in kicking in any. It doesn't even matter if it's a dollar to a hundred dollars to twenty dollars. It means the world that people are actually contributing their own money and somewhat of their time to read over and oh wow you know what I think these guys are serious exactly let's right. actually contribute a little bit of my harder working hard earned money so it, I, I it's uh, more than grateful and just very honored people are willing to do that for us and we just try to give the fans and everyone back the best possible films we can I was gonna say and you had people like uh, Chris Hellock from Diabolic magazine you had Elias uh, who's big with God and and Dark he's producing Dark you know you yeah, had some really big supporters yeah. with it amazing yeah we well, we're big supporters of his up and coming film that he just kick started yeah uh, he's, he's a great friend that we met um, we met just networking online I believe yeah he's just he's just a great supporter uh, Chris Howlock he, he's just been uh, honestly everyone's been phenomenal uh, supporters he was one of the first to review the film and he really really delved into the in his review just a fantastic review from uh, from yeah the magazine he works for writes for uh, he really understood the film and it's it's just it, it, yeah again like you said he was a supporter it was it means the world when critics who review like he reviewed familiar and work and for now to him to contribute to our next picture like I mean it almost doesn't really get better than that I mean very it's true just, it's 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 amazing whether the film would get made or not the fact he was willing to do that or anyone is willing to do that is, yeah. is so much to us it means so much what was the uh, challenge what was the biggest challenge with with uh, the production that's simple the Kickstarter finance that was okay I, I have a feeling budget would be so usually right is <laughs> usually money yeah uh, on the independent well I mean probably potentially on any level but more so independent indie guys who really like potentially have to finance most of their stuff themselves and or reach out to Kickstarter crowdfunding. Oh, very true. Uh, if I, it really is difficult to, to get your budgets going. I mean, we've had, thank God, successful previous short films, but that doesn't mean we're getting 20, 30, 40,000 from this guy to make another one. Short yeah. film, there's absolutely no money to be made in short films. <laughs> It's just it for a it's lot just, of people. It's just a, a piece to be able to build uh, their career, their portfolio. It, it, off exactly. Of. It's it's spending your own money. And me and Richard believe we want to make movies. We firmly have the love and passion and drive to make movies. We're hoping for the rest of our lives. This is what we definitely are here put on this earth to do. Yeah. And wow. We're making we're making these short films and, and going broke and killing ourselves <laughs> because we want to make the feature one day. We want to make features multiple features and we just want to do what we love yeah i was gonna say hey, let me ask you because it runs 13 minutes and change it's a very streamlined story a part of that i have no doubt has to do with budget with resources and you you work with what you have but john nichols uh who does the editing on air he did a, a tremendous job to not to trim off the fat and not let the viewer sit back and rest on his laurels. It's straightforward. It's shock cinema. It's controversial, and it's very well it's very well developed on many levels. Talk about the editing and what was left on uh, the floor. That is fabulous. I wow, I appreciate that question a lot. Great one. I'm sure John loves that too. <laughs> John uh, John's a phenomenal editor. He we actually I'm just gonna rewind here a little bit. We sure. actually met John. Uh, through Mark and Ron, Red Sneakers Media, our co-producers, they introduce us to John because they're, they're, that's his, that's their editor. Yeah. So, so we met John uh, months before before air to sit down with him and talk with him and pitch him the script and see if he'd like to edit the film and and um, you know that that went really really great. So he came on board. He cut the film and yeah, there was there was multiple edits where. I mean, I'm going to give a lot of uh, respect here and props to Richard because Richard and John basically were the ones who who cut the film. John, of course, cut the film, but Richard was sitting there beside him, I believe, like the entire time for the yeah. most part. And, and they were just working on edits, what works, what didn't work, what flowed, what was jarring, what what took you out of the moment, what you know, what took you out of the uh, out of the story there. A lot, a lot was on the cutting floor. Um, a lot was left on there, but... 
I don't know, when I watch the movie, I think it just, it, it flows so nicely. There's such a nice flow, and your brain, you never you never drop out at any point. You're always focused on, okay, what's next? I, I actually am really interested in what happens next, and it's such a gorgeous story. Yeah. And um, another level that, I, that it just hit me right now, another that we didn't even touch on yet, I don't know if you were going to go there, is the music and the sound. Exactly. That's where I was going next, actually. I, I figured that's yeah. the one place we have touched on, too. Yeah, Chris uh, Gullick. Yes, yes. Okay, and another funny story. So our co-producers, Mark and Ron, Mark introduced us to Christopher as well, because Christopher was the gentleman who scored the music for Mark's last uh, previous films, The Last Halloween, Yeah. Uh, which was Mark's last movie, which did very well on the festival circuit. That movie, uh, Christopher scored that, and we absolutely loved that, and he just did such an absolutely intense, phenomenal job on, on, on bringing out such emotion and hype emotion in spots and and just I was just absolutely blown away with uh, the music and what he sound design that he uh, came up with for the film I was gonna say it's a foundation piece for the human condition the human monsters that are shown uh, this profile with air and it the, the between the editing and the score and the sound it builds such tension and such pace with it that hats off to Richard yourself and everyone else involved for not only a successful uh, screening at Fantasia but just a quality project and it's the first time uh, Zach I can say in a long time where I was actually creeped out by it I actually had to turn away and there's only one other short film that's zombie by uh, Thomas Caruso and Bill Cunnington that I've ever felt that way about before so Amazing. Impacting. Amazing is correct because there's not a whole lot for me that does that. And this film was that effective. And it's it's definitely one of the best this year uh, for short wow. films. Thank you. Wow. That uh, that is that, that is like one of the best. That's well, thank sure you. the best thing I've heard today. <laughs> well, I wow, appreciate thank you that. Thank very much. I, I honestly appreciate that. When, when, when fans or anyone uh, watches uh, these movies Richard and I make, that is just the best thing we can uh, we can hear, honestly, because we're making these movies not for not for ourselves. We're making them for the world, and we're yeah. just so grateful everyone likes them and appreciates them. And yeah, this film did turn a lot of people off. A lot of people were like, "Okay, we saw Worm, we saw Familiar. Yeah, uh, we can't we can't wait for Air?" And it did take <laughs> a a weird little turn, if you will, yeah, into uh, into very dark areas, but. That's what filmmaking is. It's supposed to make you think and push the envelope, and that's what we're about. And if that's your feeling, hey, I mean, to each his own. That's uh, right. You're allowed to have any feeling you want. The fact that you watch the movie and you're even talking about it, hey, I'm happy. That's right. Any any press is good press when it comes to it. And to build controversy and conversation, Zach, is incredible. I'm here with producer Zach Green. We're talking from Fatal Pictures and their short film Air here in the Horror Happens Radio Show. As we wrap it up now, um, Air is going to run the, the film festival circuit probably in the next six months, maybe even more, getting it out there. What is the next step for Fatal Pictures since this is the last short film from them? The next step from Fatal Pictures, yes, so the film is probably going to be on the festival circuit, yeah, at least, um, I would say, for the next year or two. There's a couple of festivals we missed this year already, so yeah. I know I'm be getting to next year in 16. But, uh, and, and then after that, I mean, there really is very limited distribution for short films. I can tell you the film will be on iTunes once it's off the festival circuit, along with Familiar right now. The next film for Fatal Pictures, of course, is hopefully going to be our first feature debut based off uh, Worm, our award-winning short film from 2010, starring Robert Nolan. Uh, we're right now in the midst of trying to finance that movie and just wow. talking to different executives and different producers that want to help us, that believe in us, and I'm hoping once Air starts playing at more festivals and really accumulating a lot of great press and material, it sh it'll just be that much more easier to get these little meetings that I need to yeah. get to the uh, stage to really finance Worm. Wow, and and that's the great thing about the Film Fest, being able to meet and make those contacts, Zach. Is, is that something that with Film Fest, even though there's lots of digital options, the Film Fest go ahead and give filmmakers and producers and production companies that flexibility and those open channels to be able to create those films without going through all the hoops that they might not be able to do with otherwise? Yes, it, it is. It is incredible. Um, definitely not only going to the screens at festivals, but there's uh, there's pre parties, there's after parties, there's there's all sorts of um, private events and galas that uh, the filmmakers and all the industry critics, other festival programmers, 
uh, like the industry just go to and that's very 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 important for networking because that's where you meet the people that you're going to be essentially working with in the future very uh, you'll distributors that want to take on your film or future films or or potential finance and Fantasia does have a market oh yes um, and uh, unfortunately I missed out on that this year I was just uh, I mean again I hate saying it because it's absolutely no excuse but unfortunately Richard and I were very busy with other things I again I hate saying that and it's absolutely <laughs> no excuse I, I hate myself every day for not being at that market this year uh, with the feature film of ours um, that is definitely going to be happening next year at Fantasia. I will be there with a the feature film script. If it's not the one I'm trying to make now, it'll be our next one. That is fantastic. And it continues success with Zach because next year I will see you at Fantasia because I missed it this year. And Fabulous. I can't wait. I will uh, be there next year. There is man. no question about it. Man, it's such a great festival, and we look forward down the line to having Mitch Davis on to talk about it. But it's really one; it's it's really the the kickoff to a lot of different films, both short and feature, yes. that are out there on the circuit. And uh, wherever you may be, uh, most of them start at Fantasia and usually yeah. build into something more yeah, from that 100%. show. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Oh man, well, where can they find out more about Fatal Pictures and what's going well, on with uh, there? Yeah, I definitely encourage everybody to go to fatalpictures.com. You can uh, find everything there from reviews to interviews. Um, our Twitter is uh, at Fatal Pictures. Um, definitely please check that out. That's where I'm going to be announcing all the new uh, uh, film festivals that AIR is going to be uh, premiering at. It's, uh, it's playing in multiple countries around the world. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, at Fatal Pictures on Twitter. We're also on Instagram, at Fatal Pictures. Um, and fatalpictures.com, familiar of our, our previous pictures on iTunes right now if you want to get a little taste of what we're all about. Yeah. You can also definitely check out the Air Teaser. That's uh, also all over the internet right now. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, it really means a lot for just, you know, letting letting me come on and discuss the projects and uh, where, where you can potentially see them. Well, we look forward to the next one. Keep us abreast, Zach, and uh, continued great work with Fatal Pictures, Richard, Robert, and everyone else involved. Will do. Thank you very much, Jay. I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Bye. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Zach Green here on the Horror Happens Radio Show.